We've seen some of the young ladies go on to a college and major in public service careers, um, and we see more and more. I would predict over the next few years, we'll even see a few of them running for office. Mm. Mm. That would be amazing to see. So for some girls, do you keep a track of which girls are coming? So we do keep mm -hmm. uh, track of the young ladies who attend, okay. and we're beginning to do more tracking of them beyond um, Girls Day. Mm -hmm. uh, we do a shadow day, so some of the girls are invited back to shadow different women at City Hall mm -hmm. um, who are public service. Um, and we also have begun, last summer was our first time, and we're doing it again, internships as well for a few nice. of the young ladies who are interested. And pretty soon we'll be launching a scholarship um, program nice. as well. Our goal truly is to get girls from exposure and experience mm -hmm. to actually, actually being yeah. active. Yeah, that's why I asked about the track because I was like, that would that's like you need to be able to track those yeah. girls, say if they were in middle school and now a high school student. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like that. That's amazing. Amazing, amazing work that you're doing. How do you explain... Um, to the girls, the the to be able to lead, you know, how do you explain like being confident in leading? Mm -hmm. You know, I think the beauty of the way we set up Girls Day is it's so many women who lead in a million different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and what I found is most touching as we survey the girls afterwards yeah, is just the sharing of the personal experience and personal journey. Okay, because um, while some girls may not relate to my journey. Um, it's a dozen other women who mm -hmm. are also a part of it whose journey you may relate to. Mm -hmm. Maybe they grew up in the same neighborhood as you. Maybe they had the same family structure. Mm -hmm. um, maybe they had the same interests, that kind of thing. So really the girls kind of seeing themselves right. um, and some of these women who, who are leaders and who are accomplished um, and recognizing that they could do it too. Mm -hmm. That's the neat thing about it, to see a diverse group of women being able to speak to them and say, oh, you came from where I came from, or oh, you're in the same zip code that I was in. Okay, I could do it too if I really wanted to do it. Definitely. Yeah, so uh, does your younger daughter attend? She does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about her because we know we know about your legacy. We talked about your legacy. Um, now you have a daughter. You're raising a daughter, and you're raising her in an era where... Uh, you know, empowerment is everywhere. But how do you, or how have you empowered her to be who she is right now? Because she's doing some great things already. Right, right. Um, first, I'm going to say, I wouldn't be able to do any of the service that I do without the support of family. Mm -hmm. So I have a great, loving husband um, and two wonderful children. I have okay. a three-year-old son and a ten-year-old daughter. Um, my daughter um, is a leader in her own right. Um, I am proud to be her mother. Um, she now is the reigning um, 2018 Little Miss Juneteenth, mm. um, and she is also the 2019 third and fourth grade um, MLK speech contest winner wow. um, for the city of Milwaukee as well. Um, she is truly a leader and a great mind, um, and I love to watch her be her. Mm -hmm. um, she is artistic. She is opinionated. What's something about <laughs> your daughter that you wish that you had when you were her age? Her fearlessness okay. to be able to speak um, particularly to crowds of people. Um, people get, when they see her publicly speak, they give me credit for, for who she is. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, I was a teenager at the time that I began public speaking. Okay. Um, she was nine when she began. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the fearlessness, uh -huh. I mean, I've seen her be in pageants, I've seen her be in speech contests, and I've seen her get in front of crowds of hundreds of people mm -hmm. and without any nerves, without anything, and be, be able to speak her truth or perform her talent mm -hmm. um, and, be, um, and be proud in that. The other thing I really respect about my daughter is her commitment to her craft. She plays guitar, she takes vocal lessons, wow. um, and she does theater. Mm -hmm. um, but the way she rehearses, the way she's committed um, to perfecting her craft mm -hmm. um, and performing well is something that you don't see often in young children. Mm -hmm. But I think she has her eyes on goals for herself, um, and she works hard every day to achieve those. Even beyond whatever goals we as parents may set for our own children, mm -hmm. the biggest thing that's important to me is that she be happy. Um, and be a good person yeah. um, and give back to the community. So, Girls Day at City Hall is coming up. It's going to be on the 14th. What are you expecting this year? I am expecting, um, you know, a lot of sharing 
of uh, experience from the female elected and public servants for young people. I'm expecting the young people to ask the right questions um, and for information to be shared. Um, and I would hope that for at least some of the girls that they're touched um, in a way that it forces them to explore their own leadership and their desire to be public service um, mm -hmm. at some point. Um, plus, it'll be a lot of fun. I mean, it's always highly inspirational. Yeah, and I've been to yeah. one, and it's been, it was an amazing time. Yeah. <laughs> it was an amazing time. This is a feel-good time Yeah, for the powerful young ladies that come through the halls of City Hall. Um, even the city workers often tell me, they're like, I just love to watch all the little girls here that day. It just changes the yeah. atmosphere that day. The biggest thing I hope though is that the girls kind of network with each other because mm -hmm. I think it's one thing to have panelists and older people talk to you mm -hmm. it's another thing for them to connect with one another and see years from now some of the girls they met here mm -hmm. might be their colleagues on a congressional floor yeah. on a council floor yeah. you know? I, I think I think the event is a is a great way and it's a great like stepping stone for girls to be able to years down the line and say, remember we were at City yeah. Hall for Girls Day? You know, I think that you are really like setting the foundation um, for the young women to be able to explore and then to actually make the decision to say, you know, I'm actually going to run and be confident in saying I'm going to run. You know, they don't really have to be pushed. And I think we're moving into that direction where it's not where you really have to be pushed, where you know, because women, we kind of know yeah. that we have it. You know, I got a theory on that. My mm -hmm. theory is um, the reason historically that we have to be asked mm -hmm. is because the leadership skills that we as women possess on a regular daily basis, mm -hmm. managing being wives, being mothers, mm -hmm. managing households, all of these things are things that we do for survival. Right. We don't think of them That's as special talents. That's a great talent. point. Right. We don't think of them as special talents. We don't think of it as the problem solving and resource driven mindset yeah. that we as women okay. often have to Because we're always use. figuring stuff out. Yeah. Yeah. That are that's a wonderful way to think policy wise and for for politics. But we don't think of it as that. We just think of it as, you know, living our lives, supporting our families, doing what we need to do. Um, it isn't often until somebody else sees us doing it right. and says, hey, think about it. Yeah. But I think you're right. I think times are changing. Mm -hmm. um, and now it is more women stepping up. Um, and girls, there's just one small way of getting young ladies to not wait. But thank you for your time, District 6. Mm -hmm. Alderwoman, Malele Cox. Thank you.